Hello everyone. My name is Gordon Amory and I'm one of the organists at Gillingham Methodist Church. I offer you a very warm welcome to our virtual carol service. The idea for a virtual service came about following the cancellation of our usual carol service due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This service has always been a lovely occasion and one of the highlights of the year for me, so I've done my best to recreate it as an online event. It takes our usual format with a mixture of carols, lessons and prayers, along with some beautiful music from our Methodist Church and Community Church members and some guest performers. At this point, I must apologise that our wonderful Sweetland organ, which you'll hear a lot of in this video, is not in the best of tune, since it hasn't been tuned since before the lockdown. Believe me, it usually sounds a lot sweeter than it does here. Some of you may have noticed that this video is over two hours long. Please don't panic. The service itself lasts about an hour and 25 minutes, which includes the opening and closing music. The remainder of the video comprises a Christmas greeting section with contributions from a number of previous music at GMC performers. I have been very honoured to re receive more than a dozen contributions from international musicians, including David Briggs, New York City, USA, Martin Setchell, New Zealand, and Hans Hielscher from Wiesbaden in Germany. For the non-organists amongst you, I can tell you that the contributions are not just confined to organ music, so I'm hoping that it will be something to please everyone. I'll also be posting these Christmas greetings as a separate video for those who are not interested in the carol service, but please be warned, you may miss out on some hidden gems. Finally, a big thank you to those who have contributed to this video in any way. I've been overwhelmed by the support I've been given.
from depths of hell thy people save and give them victory Well, here we are. This is probably not the type of carol service you want to attend, and I would rather welcome you in person to a packed church with a buzz of excitement as we prepare to sing familiar carols and learn some new ones, listen to familiar words whilst discovering that God has always something fresh to say, and seeing familiar faces, but sharing a mince pie with someone we've not met before. But sadly, all of these things are just not an option this year. However, we will be able to listen and sing along to some fantastic music. We'll be able to hear timeless words that can bring light and hope to the darkest days. And this online event will be seen in homes around Gillingham, but potentially across the county and even around the world. And that is truly remarkable. And so, wherever you are joining us from, I welcome you to this time of wonder and worship. The God of time and eternity knows you by name and invites you to open your eyes, ears and hearts to all that will take place in this cyberspace. And so we pray. O oh Lord, in these strange times and difficult days, no hurdle is too great for you to overcome. So unite us, even though we are apart. Encourage us, even though we are weary. And bring us joy, 
through the birth of Jesus, your Son, our Saviour. Amen. Once in royal David's city stood a lowly cattle shed where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed. Mary was that mother mud. reading from uh, the book of Isaiah chapter 9 verses 2 and then 6 and 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Let's all pray for a while. 
Heavenly Father, we come together tonight to celebrate the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and our Lord. We thank you for this joyful time, for time spent with friends, with family, with our church family. We thank you that you give us the strength in difficult times to push through and by your grace we will be overcomers. We remember especially those at this time of year who are lonely, who are poor, who are homeless and hungry, those who are in distress. Lord, we ask a special blessing upon them that they might find comfort and they might find strength. And Father, help us to find the means and the motivation to do what we can to improve their lives, to show them the love of Jesus, to show them the gospel. Lord, we ask for joy in our hearts that is spilling out to each and every person around us. Joy of life, the joy of knowing Jesus as our Saviour, knowing Jesus as our Lord. And as we come together tonight, we ask that you bless us, bless our families, that you make us a blessing. Father, we pray that amidst the food and all the feasting and the great time that everyone has, the being with family and friends, that we remember what it's all about. It's all about you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever.
The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he said to her, Greetings, favoured one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by these words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, for you have found favour with God. You will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of David forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy, and will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, who in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her, who was thought to be barren. For nothing is impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her.
Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. The reading is taken from Luke chapter 2, reading verses 1 to 7, the birth of Jesus. In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available to them. still the evening hushed the falling snow virgin wine listening in the light 
stoplights glow Out across the shining land From hilltop to the vale The city town or village Will a wondrous tale Bring out, sing out with joy and peace and love On this night we joy sing With hope of peace and love Skies are heavy, lay down No snow is yet to fall I shall bend on yielding High in treetops tall Way upon the hillside Flock shelter from the cold The shepherds out there searching To bring them to the fold Sing out with joy and peace and love On this night be joy-sing With hope of peace and love Around the world is conflict Broken Out in the sun, at the tyrant's hand, the dark days are uncertain. Keep faith, you're not the world. The good are always striving to bring you safe to home. Now, sing out. With joy and peace and love On this night we joy sing With hope of peace and love Bring out, sing out With joy and peace and love On this night we joy sing with hopes of peace and love. If I were a wise man, 
Rusted hard as I am Water like a stone Snow had fallen Snow on snow Snow on snow In the bleak midwinter Long ago This reading is from Luke chapter 2 and I'm reading from verses 8 to 20. It's entitled The Shepherds and the Angels. There were some shepherds in that part of the country who were spending the night in the fields taking care of their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone over them. They were terribly afraid but the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I am here with good news for you which will bring great joy to all the people. This very day in David's town, your Saviour was born, Christ the Lord, and this is what will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great army of heaven's angels appeared, with the angels singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. And so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the manger. When the shepherds saw him, they told them what the angel had said about the child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. Mary remembered all these things and thought deeply about them. The shepherds went back, singing praises to God for all they had heard and seen. It had been just as the angel had told them. Amen.
This reading is taken from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. The birth of a child. What could be more captivating and encouraging? The arrival of new life and the embodiment of hope for the future. A birth is one of those pivotal points in the lives of those who are involved. Parents are filled with joy and expectation as well as exhaustion and apprehension. The time came for the baby to be born and she, Mary, gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. How many times have I read those words and tried to convey the wonder of the story they tell? I cannot deny, this year I come to them afresh, because a few weeks ago Jean and I celebrated the joy of becoming grandparents for the first time. At the end of this most tumultuous of years, we have had some good news, great news. After months of anticipation, our grandchild, a daughter, has been born. And yet, we cannot hold her. A basic human desire to clasp to ourselves a loved one, just cannot be fulfilled. Of course we understand why this is, but it's hard. The Covid crisis has kept us apart and many of us have been unable to meet, touch and embrace family and friends, especially those who are sick, elderly or isolated. And this has been deeply distressing. And during this year, we, in white majority communities, have been confronted by the stories of prejudice and exclusion experienced by black and mixed race peoples. And the prophetic voices that have long warned of a climate emergency are finally waking a wider audience, not just those in the Beard and Sandals Brigade. These are hard messages to hear and receive. Now the birth of a child does not make everything easy or solve our chronic problems, but it does give us hope. And by hope, I don't mean a vague notion that everything's going to be all right. Instead, our hope is rooted in those actions that display our faith 
and our vision for the future. The hope I have for my new but as yet unhugged granddaughter is that she will grow up in a community and discover a faith that reflects the kingdom of God. That community which Jesus, the man, revealed to all. A place where healing and wholeness are offered freely and the untouchable are embraced again. Where race and ethnicity do not define our opportunities and a Samaritan is declared good. Where our worth is not defined by how many barns we build, but by the treasures we create through self-offering love, even that love displayed on a cross. So amidst the trials and the difficulties of this year, we have also seen actions of hope that bring change. Here in Gillingham and in many other places, we have witnessed acts of extraordinary kindness and practical care which have made a difference to so many. The truth we wish to affirm and proclaim at Christmas is that the birth of Jesus demonstrates God's undiminished love. As the Epistle of John succinctly puts it, we love because he first loved us. I know that the birth of a baby in our family demands changes in me. And this birth has renewed in me the eternal truth that the birth of Jesus requires even more, the willingness to live in hope. So if you are able to pray this prayer with me, join in the Amen to make it your own. God of love, in Jesus, the babe of Bethlehem, we see you as you are. And as we see you, we are filled with awe, wonder and love. Open our eyes and our hearts to your coming, that we may respond with joy and live in hope. Amen and Amen.
Let us pray. If ever there was a year we needed Christmas, this is the year. We hardly know how to describe the year we have lived through. We hesitate to reflect on all the mess around us in 2020. All we know is that nothing seems right. Nothing seems like it ought to be. Nothing. Tear through the mess, O oh Lord, and come down again. We long to be your people, a people of hope. We need Christmas. Come, Lord Jesus, come. 
when the NHS, doctors, nurses, other key workers are overwhelmed or don't know what to do first. Come, Lord Jesus, come. When refugees have nowhere to go and the homeless sleep on the streets. Come, Lord Jesus, come. When peace seems elusive and wars scar the land. Come, Lord Jesus, come. When we fear that Christmas will be so different and we find it hard to get excited about celebrating your birthday. Come, Lord Jesus, come. When mental or physical illness, anxiety or fear, threaten to overwhelm us. Come, Lord Jesus, come. When the finances don't add up and redundancies have shattered lives. Come, Lord Jesus, come. When hunger and fear of nothing to eat and the kindness of neighbours and the food bank are the only solution. Come, Lord Jesus, come. When children and young people struggle at school and worry about their future. Come, Lord Jesus, come. When we can be an answer to our own prayer or can bring hope to your people. Come, Lord Jesus, come. If ever there was a year we needed Christmas, this is the year. Come, come Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus come. come. Amen. Amen.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born, not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth.
we have listened again to the story of the birth of Jesus two millennia ago. And as this virtual carol service draws to a close, I want to thank all who have taken part in any way. Our musicians and soloists, those who have read the Bible story, and especially to Gordon Amory, who has planned and coordinated everything. We hope you have been blessed by being able to share in this time. And I hope that whatever you are able to do and whoever you are able to spend time with in the coming days, it will bring you joy. And so in our final blessing, we pray. O oh God, our ideals of a perfect Christmas have been jolted this year and we can't have things the way we'd like them to be. But that is why you come to us in Jesus, the baby born in an outhouse, who became the man who healed the brokenhearted, and who laid down his life that we might know the power of eternal love. So may the blessing of the vulnerable child, the wounded healer, and the risen saviour be with us this Christmas and always. Amen.
Greetings from Wiesbaden Market Church in Germany, and Merry Christmas.
Happy Christmas from Samano. Hello, I was delighted when Gordon asked me to record a little message and short piece to all my friends at Gillingham. It's been a very special thing to me to have played so many times over many years at Gillingham Methodist Church, both uh, piano recitals and a couple of organ recitals as well, not something I usually do too often. So uh, um, it has special memories for me and a lovely bunch of people and I do hope you've all been keeping well and I hope I'll be back there and see you all and play to you again before too long. Meanwhile a little Christmas gift to you all. Here's a piece by the Russian composer Vladimir Ivanovich Rebikov who was a rather um, wrote in the manner of Tchaikovsky. He was in the next generation born in 1866 in Siberia. He died um, at Yalta on the Crimean Peninsula in 1920 and he wrote a little um, short Christmas fairy play to a libretto taken from Dostoevsky, Hans Andersen and Gerhard Hauptmann. It was called The Christmas Tree and this one particular piece um, uh, was, was very popular at one time. It shows a girl from a very poor family dancing around a Christmas tree. All sorts of wonderful presents and treats materialize and she has a wonderful time dancing around this tree and then she wakes up. The dream um, disappears and she's in the cold reality of her poverty. But it's a beautiful, beautiful little uh, Christmas vision. Rebikoff's Christmas Tree Waltz. And may I wish you all a very happy Christmas and a healthy 2021. And I hope I'll see all my friends in Gillingham then. 
Do stay well and keep safe. Bye bye. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan. Earth stood hard as iron, water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, snow on snow. In the bleak midwinter, I've really enjoyed uh, visiting the church in Gillingham in recent years to share your Christmas service with you. And I'm very sad uh, to know so many people will be missing that celebration this year. Um, so I'm wishing you a very Merry Christmas. Christian men rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Give ye heed to what we say, Jesus Christ is born today. Oaks and ass before him bow, and he is in a manger now. Christ is born today. Christ is born today. Christian men rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now he hear of endless bliss. Jesus Christ was born for this. He 
Christmas to GMC from Megson and our dogs.
very happy Christmas to you all. From us both in New Zealand. Greetings to you all in Gillingham from a hot and steamy Thailand about 6,500 miles away from you. Uh, I'm David Price, the Anglican chaplain here in Pattaya, and it was my great pleasure and privilege to play a recital for you back in 2019, how long ago that seems. But we've had this dreadful year of 2020, which I'm sure we can't all wait to see the back of. Uh, I hope very much to be able to see you in 2021, but in the meantime, a very happy and blessed Christmas to you in whatever way it may be possible with all the restrictions, and let's hope for very much better luck all round in 2021. May God bless you all. Wishing everyone at GMC a happy Christmas.
Well, hello, very good friends at Gillingham Methodist Church. It's very, very good to be with you and uh, warm greetings from here at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine in New York City. And uh, Gordon Amory, my very good friend uh, for, for many years now, uh, since I've been coming to Gillingham to give uh, very regular concerts, he invited me to contribute to your virtual carol service today by playing this wonderful piece by J.S. Bach, the, the famous chorale prelude on In Dolce Jubilo. Uh, and here it is. This organ, by the way, is uh, amazingly completely digital. There's not a single pipe. Uh, as many of you may know, we had um, a fire here on Palm Sunday 2019, which put the very famous Aeolian Skinner pipe organ out of action for a while, and it's still being restored. Uh, so we're enjoying this, this uh, digital organ by Walker Technical Company, which is uh, it's kind of really the top um, quality of digital organs today. And uh, in this acoustic here in St. John the Divine, it really sounds spectacular. Anyway, today I'm recording this piece. It's the 3rd of December, which is the day that the vaccine from Pfizer was introduced into the UK. And so this has been such an amazing combination of, of faith and science. And uh, we give very grateful thanks to God for this. And what's going to happen over the next four or five months, just imagine as we come back to normal, it's going to be such an ecstatic feeling. Anyway, I, I hope you'll get some of that feeling from Bach's music as well. This is. Uh, an absolutely flamboyant and wonderful piece of bark in Dolce Jubilo and happy Christmas.